Hello, this is the Book Bear, and today I'm going to talk about Dune. Some of you may have heard of this, some of you may have not. I had heard about this book series for a long time. I had never had a chance to get into it just because of other stuff. Um, my best friend, when we met, the first thing she told me was I had to read Dune. And I was like, I will get around to it. I've been wanting to, I haven't had a chance to. And so what she did, she bought me an Amazon copy of the first one and told me I had to read it or we couldn't be friends. So <laughs> I started reading it um, almost a year later and six books. I have read the Frank Herbert series section. Uh, Frank Herbert wrote the first six, which are Dune, Dune Messiah, Children of Dune, God Emperor of Dune, Heretics of Dune, and Chapter House Dune. It's a lot of books to memorize. Um, he, he unfortunately died uh, with leaving notes for Dune 7, which Kevin J. Anderson and his son, uh, Frank Herbert's son, Brian Herbert, uh, have actually continued the series. They wrote like a whole bunch of other side stories, there's prequels, there's legends, and then there's two more that finish out the series, which I can't think of the name right now, but that's not important because we're not going to talk about them because I haven't read them. So, um, though, Dune is this, for me, it's a sci-fi book. It's about this some unnamed time in the future where humans have scattered beyond Earth and they've set all these different planets. Um, there's this weird technology thing where a lot of like computer stuff, actually Frank Herbert made a decision not to put that in. He basically made it so the computers were destroyed by humans. And so you have this world where you have, you know, light speed travel and you have laser weapons, but there's no computers. So it's very interesting in that aspect if you hear him meow, it's a cat. Not me, I swear. I only meow occasionally. <laughs> so there's that aspect of, of, of Dune, but besides that, there's this really interesting political thing that goes through the whole thing. So if you like political stories, definitely something that you're like, oh, sci-fi, I don't want to read that. But if you like political stories, you could definitely pick it up. It's There's this power struggle versus these powerful families that are in control. There's this group called the Bene Gesserit who want to basically be puppet masters behind everybody. There's the Bene Talaxio. I'm going to butcher names, by the way, because I... I can't speak English, let alone any other language. Um, they're basically this side people that they have their own thing they do. They, I don't want to give away spoilers because they don't really come in until later on, but they have their own stuff they do. Then you have the Ixians who are basically making crazy technology they're not supposed to because it's been outlawed, but they're doing it anyway. And so you have all these different factions that are happening, and, and some are taken away, some are added throughout the series. And, and so they're always, each faction has their own thing that they're worried about, that they want to do. Um, which is really cool because as you read, I mean, Dune compromise, compromises, I think, like four or five thousand years of history between Dune and Chapter House Dune. You have this huge expanse of time. And there are gaps that happen, which when they wrote Legends of Dune, it kind of fills those gaps in. But aside from the, uh, a jump that happens between Children of Dune and Dune Messiah and then Dune Messiah and heretics, you get most of that history within the book. So you're only missing a few thousand years of stuff, um, which sounds like a lot, but in, in total really isn't that much compared to the series. And you see not just the political changes, but the family changes, the people changes, the ecological changes on each of the planets that are represented in the story, because there's several different ones you see them change throughout this course of this history for whatever reason um, is changing. And I'm, I'm being very vague because I don't want to give away plot points and stuff like that. And um, at, at the heart of the story, you have the main family, which is the Atreides. They're the ones that really drive everything forward for the most part. Um, they're the backbone of, of the story, basically the narrative. And they ha there's a lot of different things that happen with them throughout. And, uh, it's, it's just it's something that's really cool to, to be able to sit down and read this. It, it almost becomes like a history book of the future uh, that Frank Herbert thought this is what would happen if these things were to take place. Uh, so you see this evolution of, of people, of, a cult, of the ecological, of the political evolutions as, you know, in this time period of 6,000 years you see empires come up and empires come down. And behind it all, you have this religion that slowly, it starts as one thing, 
there's like an overarching that starts as one thing and grows to be something and then changes, but it's always driving what's going on. It's called the golden path, and you'll, you, I think you actually hear about it first time in actually the second book. Uh, but it's this idea that they that uh, certain characters get and they want to push forward and they're go willing to go to whatever it takes to make sure this happens. And and then you see the fallout of those actions take place in the later books. And it, it's just really interesting to see because Frank Herbert, from what I've read, he, he grew up, as, I believe, Catholic and then converted to Buddhism at, uh, later on in life. And you actually can see the influences of both in everything he writes. You can see the Catholic influences, you can see the Buddhist influences on what he's creating, but at the same time you're seeing this totally unique perspective at the same time that he's created within the mixings of these. And not only that, he takes historical religions and he basically, he kind of, he evolves them as they would, as he believed they would throughout the time. There's, there's offshoots of, of Hinduism, of, of, of Buddhism, of Christianity, of, of Islamic faith, there's all these offshoots that are, and what they, what has happened to them from the time that people left the planet Earth to, to now, based on just the changes throughout the world. So if you're interested in sci-fi, if you're interested in politics, if you're interested in religion, if you're interested in aliens, slight romance, there are so many different things within the Dune series that don't let the, first of all, decide, I mean, the first Dune is is probably the longest, I think, and it's 883 pages, and, you know, they usually range between, somewhere between three and 500, but, um, so don't let the size of the series scare you off, don't let the sci-fi label scare you off. If you are interested in anything, any comprehensive story that, that can track the, the growth of things, and the deterioration at the same time, the growth and deterioration of different things, as time passes and connects them in such a way that it doesn't seem forced. Everything's connected and works the way you naturally think it would actually work. And I, I think that's one, that's a mark of a good author. Tolkien did that, and um, not that I've read the Wheel of Time series, but I've heard that the Wheel of Time series is much like that's another series I need to get into. Um, and I think it's something that George Martin started with in Song of Ice and Fire, and I'm probably gonna get a little bit of hate for this, but I think he's kind of, he started with this idea, and it's gotten away from him. Um, that's a video for a whole other time. But Dune, though, I think is something that definitely people should should at least give a chance to. Uh, I will say, the only flaw I can really think about is most of Dune, it's Frank Herbert's style, is that the first quarter to half is a little slow paced because he's setting things up, but the second half of the book always flies by. So. If you don't mind slow pace in the beginning, and you can, if you can wait that out, if you're not someone that minds that, you'll have a lot of fun time reading these books. Definitely recommend them, and that's all from Book Bear. Two.